What's up guys, Silver here with another Halo Master Chief Collection Achievement Guide. This time we are doing part 1 of 13 for the Halo 2 Lasso Playlist Achievement, which we did 5 years ago. But these are going to be revised guides with better strats, so get ready because we're about to make the hardest Lasso campaign much easier than it was in the past. First of all, attention all co-op players. You cannot unlock this achievement by playing entirely on co-op. The reason for this is because when you play on co-op, the game actually starts you off on Cairo Station, which is technically the third mission of 15. So you want to actually start the Lasso playlist by yourself, get through the Heretic and the Armory, which is mostly just cutscenes, and then you could join up with your buddy after that to tackle Cairo Stations and then the rest of the missions thereafter. The only time you can unlock this achievement is after beating the final mission, aka the Great Journey, and having all of the other missions completed at that time. If you beat the Great Journey and then go back and play the Heretic and the Armory, it will not unlock until you go back and beat the Great Journey a second time, so that would be super annoying. Avoid the pain and suffering by playing solo until you get to Cairo Station, then buddy up. If you're playing solo all the way, then none of this matters to you, and we'll jump into the skulls now. There are 14 in the Halo 2 Lasso playlist. The first one is Anger. This makes enemies fire their weapons faster and more frequently. There's pros and cons to this, actually, so we'll get into that a little later in this video. Assassin is the next skull, which makes all enemies permanently cloaked, aka invisible, but it's actually much easier to see these invisible enemies. They're not totally invisible, they're just mostly invisible, and it's easier to see them on the original graphics, which is why I'll be in the classic graphics for these walkthroughs. I know a lot of you are like, hey, turn on the anniversary graphics, but we're playing Lasso, we're getting all the advantages we can here, so turn on those classic graphics. And that brings us to the Black Eye Skull. This one means your shields will only recharge when you get kills via melee. So they go up instantly like they did in Halo CE, the first Halo, but you actually need to register the kill in Halo 2 for it to go up, unlike in CE when you simply had to smack the enemy and it didn't matter if they died or not, your shield would just go up. This time you actually have to get the kill a perk in Halo 2, though, it works not only on enemies, but on anything that has health. So whether they're friendly, neutral, or hostile, or even on inanimate objects that have health, like some boxes, vehicles, lampposts, etc. You could get shield back from those as well, so very useful. Unfortunately, glass is not included, so you cannot get uh, health from glass. But another benefit of the Black Eye Skull in Halo 2 is it actually allows you to get up to a double overshield. So rather than just your regular shield being the highest amount of shield you could get, in this game you could actually get a double overshield essentially giving you three shields and your underlying health, whatever that may be. The next skull is Blind, which takes away your heads-up display and your weapon. You can't see what weapon you have out. But before you jump into Lasso, you can actually create a makeshift reticle for yourself by going to a custom game on any map, preferably one with a sniper though, uh, like Lockout, grabbing the sniper, then placing a small square piece of clear tape over the crosshair, and then you can trace the crosshair onto the tape. And then that way, when you go into the playlist, you have that tiny sniper uh, crosshair so you can more easily aim and kill enemies. But one thing you want to note is if you're playing on Xbox, the crosshairs are in different places between FPS weapons like the BR, SMG, and Sniper compared to third-person weapons like turrets and other vehicle-mounted weapons. But again, that's something you only need to worry about if you're on Xbox. If you're on PC, the crosshairs should be in the same spot for all the weapons. But you could also tell what gun you have out by looking at your shadow or paying attention to the sound it makes when you switch weapons. You could also potentially tell by meleeing because your camera actually moves in unique ways depending on which gun you have out. You may also be able to tell by zooming. For example, if you have a BR and a sniper, you could tell which one you have out by how far you could zoom in and also how many times you could zoom in. Obviously, with the sniper, you could zoom in twice and the BR only once. You could also hop in and out of a vehicle repeatedly, and you'll be able to see which gun you have out briefly as you transition between first-person and third-person point of view. So lots of ways to tell what weapons you have out other than just shooting it, but it does take some getting used to before you feel super comfortable doing it. Another skull is catch, which means enemies will drop and throw more grenades. I actually like that one because if they're throwing grenades at you, it's kind of easy to dodge their grenades most of the time, and that means they're at least not shooting at you, so it's easier to get close to them and probably kill them with a melee. And they're also dropping more grenades, so that's useful for us because we could grab more, have more supplies and everything. Famine means weapons dropped by AI have half the ammo they normally would. Ghost means AI no longer flinch from attack, so that's kind of annoying. Grunt Birthday Party has no effect on gameplay. Grunt headshots just lead to glorious celebrations with children screaming yay as confetti pours out of their heads. So just a fun little addition. Iron is a super annoying one. In co-op, if one person dies, it sets both of you back to your last checkpoint. If you're solo, it restarts the entire level, so pretty devastating, but you could avoid this penalty by immediately pausing the game when you die going to save and quit, and then when you're back in the pregame lobby, go back and hit resume, and this will start you at your last checkpoint. So annoying having to deload and then reload the mission, but way better than starting over entirely. I would have been your daddy means rare combat dialogue becomes more common. Mythic means enemies have increased health. Sputnik means mass of objects is decreased, making them more easily displaced, which is actually pretty useful in a lot of situations. So we'll use that to our advantage. That's just wrong, aka the Whoopopotamus skull increases enemy awareness of the player so they have better hearing, vision, they'll attack you a lot more, it's harder to sneak up on them. 
And then finally, Thunderstorm, which upgrades the rank of most enemies. So instead of a Grunt Miner, you'll be dealing with a Grunt Major. Instead of an Elite Miner, you'll get an Elite Major. So things like that. And with all that being said, let's get into it. This is Cairo Station, the first playable actual mission. So we're going to start off by going down these stairs, and we're going to grab a BR and an SMG. You want to reload both of these. When you pick them up, they have a half-empty magazine. So you want to reload both of them, and then just kind of stick around so you can pick up more ammo. So you have full ammo. But then you want to come over here and knock these bigger boxes away from these two smaller boxes that are stacked on top of each other. These boxes can actually be damaged and killed, quote-unquote, and you get the shield benefits from Black Eye by destroying these boxes. But I'm just kind of running and trying to hit my legs on the top one so it knocks it off the bottom one. So you can see I just kind of clipped the box with my uh, legs as I jumped over them. And we're just going to melee them uh, three or four times while we're standing on top of them. I found they're much more likely to give you health if you're kind of pinning the box against a wall or under your own weight. You're more likely to get uh, the health from the boxes when you destroy them so they don't really have an animation that they've been destroyed they stay the same they don't look like they've been uh you know hurt or anything but after three or four smacks they should die quote unquote and you'll get some overshield uh, from that sometimes you do sometimes you don't with these boxes it's kind of hit or miss and unfortunately there's no way to tell if you got the overshield at this point because you can't look at your own shield uh, because you're in a first person point of view with the blind skull on but even if you wind up not getting any shield from this don't worry about it in no way is it essential that you get shield from this before we continue so feel free to just ignore this if you want if you just want to move on to the next part of the mission but now we're moving into the next section and you can see i'm using the smg to take out all of these glass panels and the reason i'm doing that is because it makes it easier to maneuver a lot of the times not for all the different pieces of glass but for some of these it's easier to kind of maneuver around the map here once there's no glass in the way because if you're being chased by an elite with a sword you want to have no resistance even a small pane of glass can kind of slow you down and uh, then you're sliced up by that elite so we don't want that take out all the glass and then we're going to hang out up here and we're going to wait for the enemies to bust through that door down below here and we're going to hang back you can see the enemies are shooting at our friendlies now we're just going to hang back here for a few seconds then we're going to drop down and go in here this despawns all the enemies that would spawn and be uh, reinforcements for those enemies that just went in so we've despawned those guys. Now we're going to double back after waiting a few seconds and we're going to shoot the grunts and you could possibly melee and kill the elites from behind because they're distracted. Sometimes they're still shooting at Johnson and the Marines. Sometimes they've drawn their swords already, which is what's happening in this case. So I can't really get close behind them safely and melee them. So I'm just going to run around and uh, wait for them to go after Johnson. And when there's two sword guys slicing Johnson, we're going to use Johnson for bait basically for this whole level. And when there's two sword elites slicing them, it's tough to get behind them and assassinate those elites because they can actually kill you on their backswing. So even if we might dodge one of them and assassinate that one, the second guy with the backswing will probably kill us. So that's too dangerous. So you can see here I took out the elite or one of the elites with some plasma and then I just finished them with a headshot. And then for the second elite, I was able to quickly finish off with a back smack. And you want to make sure that you're timing that right because, again, you can get hit with that backswing and probably will if you don't time it right. So... We're going to go over here. We're going to grab a plasma rifle from one of those elites. When they draw their swords, they drop their plasma rifle. So we're going to grab the plasma rifle, drop our BR because we can't grab Johnson's BR if we have one as well. So grab a plasma rifle and any other weapon, and then you could actually exchange for Johnson's BR. And the reason we do that is because Johnson is much more effective with a plasma rifle. So now we have a BR for ourselves and a sword. Those are the two weapons you want to grab for yourself and make sure Johnson has that plasma rifle. So you can see here... The effects of the Anger Skull that I was mentioning earlier, they actually uh, make the elites more likely to just kind of get stuck in an animation of firing and waiting for their gun to cool down and then firing and waiting for the gun to cool down. So that's what happened there. And sometimes an elite will hop on this turret here. So if that happens, just kind of follow that path I did. Go up the stairs and you drop down to the side where he can't shoot you. And then you could wait for him to get off the turret, which he will do because he's angry and notices you're behind him. And then you could quickly kill him with a back smack. You could see I also meleeed the turret and destroyed that and thereby got some shield from that. So we should have full double overshield at this point. And then we're going to slice this soda can machine over here. Soda can machine? It's just a soda machine. And then we're going to move this box. We're going to hit the left side of this box, and that gets it to rotate. So you could hit it and uh, kind of accelerate it a little more than if you hit it straight on. And we're going to kind of wedge this over so it's kind of blocking the path. You can't really get through here now. But then we're going to kind of back it off a little bit so there's a pathway between the crate and the soda machine here. And then we're going to send Johnson through that gap. 
They'll just take it. He's invincible, so no worries about him dying or anything. But don't do that. I accidentally hit the soda machine, so I have to go put this back in place again. And then we'll be able to send Johnson through. Sometimes Johnson cooperates more than other times, so it's a little random uh, how he's going to behave for you. We're going to send him through, and as soon as we get him through the gap, we can kind of back up and quickly hit the crate so it blocks that hole that we created. So now Johnson is stuck over there. Johnson is actually scripted to just stay here in this section, and then when you proceed to the next part of the mission, he despawns, and you actually meet up with him later. So there's going to be two Johnsons once we get further in the mission. But we're going to take this guy, and we're going to slice him up the stairs. And once we get to the top of the stairs, we want to stop slicing because we want to get the checkpoint at the top of these stairs. And if you're meleeing or jumping, you actually delay or totally void checkpoints. So we don't want that. So once you get him halfway up the stairs, he actually runs up on his own. So you can run back here, get the checkpoint. You can see I waited a couple seconds before I started up again. And you could actually start slicing this box and uh, kind of block the doorway here. He got past us, but fortunately, he ran back on his own volition, so we didn't have to worry about slicing him through again. But you can see Johnson is running to the other set of doors over there, which is where we want him to go, so that's good news. Sometimes you have to keep slicing him for a little bit to get him to go down there, so keep kind of pushing him in that direction until he goes there. And we're going to knock these three boxes down into the section below once Johnson is over there. So you can see I took out that turret with the BR melees. You don't want to use your sword to melee things because that actually doesn't get you any shield. You want to melee and get your shield up with any other thing that is not a sword, basically. So we knocked those three boxes down below. We meleeed the turret for shields. There's BR ammo on the wall here. We're going to move over here, and this spawns in some enemies over here. One is going to be a grunt on the stairs, and there's going to be two elites down below. And you can see that Johnson is actually firing at these invisible enemies, even though they're technically invisible. When they spawn in, they are momentarily visible until their camo kicks in. So that's why Johnson was able to see this elite and uh, kind of start firing at them. You'll notice that Johnson doesn't fire at a lot of enemies because he can't see them because they're invisible, obviously. So fortunately, when you go over here, if Johnson's here when they spawn in, you will notice them because they're not invisible right away when they spawn. But as I was pushing Johnson forward as a distraction, I heard the elite come up behind me and draw his sword. They always yell and get angry before they draw their sword. So that's a way you could tell. Right there, I got hit by the sword, but I had double overshield, so it was enough to withstand the hit from the sword. Usually you die anyway from a sword swipe like that, so you can see I hit start real quick so I could do the iron workaround, which is hitting start, save, and quit, and then resume once you get back to the lobby. But fortunately, I didn't have to do it. So uh, we have the one elite, which is joining the two other elites in the main area here. Across the way, there's always three grunts over there. And as you can see, there's grunts on this side as well, so you should probably take out these guys entirely before you start focusing on the grunts across the way. But uh, I forgot about that last remaining grunt there momentarily until he started shooting at me, of course. And now we're going to take out the three remaining elites, the two main elites in this main area, plus the uh, addition of the one that was sorting Johnson into this section. So we're going to close the gap on that guy if he's close enough like he was there. And you can see when I meleeed him, it actually turns him around due to the Sputnik skull. And then this guy was kind of focused on Johnson so we could easily go up behind him. It's a little random how you deal with these elites in this section because they always behave a little differently. So uh, just kind of get close enough to him where you could kill him with the melee. And then we could start uh, building a little fort Drag this soda can over so Johnson can't run backwards into the beginning of the mission, or towards the beginning of the mission. I keep saying soda cans, but I mean soda machines, these giant rectangular boxes, soda can vending machines. And uh, we're just going to move these so they block the doorway here so Johnson can't move to previous sections. And then we could kind of shove Johnson forward. But before we do that, I'm going to grab more BR ammo up here. Johnson, you'll notice, likes to stay behind boxes or barricades. You can see there's some barricades set up throughout this mission. Uh, one's right in front of him by this box here to my left. And uh, he will just kind of set up behind one of those or post up on a crate. So that's just good to be aware of because you'll know how he's going to react more so if you know that he loves boxes and he loves those barricades. But you can see here now I am blocking these pathways with these boxes that I shoved down here. And if you want to fine tune it, you want to smack it without the sword. If you want to have a little more power behind your melee, use the sword. So that's really why we have the sword is to kind of have a little more power behind our melee so we can shove things around throughout this mission. So that includes Johnson. Uh, this is the third box that we brought from uh, up above. And we're going to push it towards this area and this pathway. But we're going to not entirely block the path because we want to kind of shove Johnson through and then block the path right afterwards like we did previously. So now that we're all set up, we're going to start slicing Johnson towards that path. And sometimes he likes to run back towards the beginning of the mission like you can see. He tried to do there, but the doorway blocked him. He kind of tried to climb up on the vending machine there and hit his head on the door frame, fortunately. So uh, he's trying to run back to the previous barricade. He likes to travel between barricades 
like I was talking about earlier. He loves those barricades and those crates. So at this point, we could kind of just keep shoving them, keep shoving this uh, box into Johnson, which is probably not the best idea. He could be a lot more uh, safe and conservative about this. And that was fine until I hit that box one more time. So it was totally blocked. Johnson was through. Now I'm just shoving him over here so he doesn't run past this uh, box, and I can run back here real quick and fix that up. So we're looking good. I kind of broke the barrier uh, for making these enemies spawn in, or I'm about to right now. So if I break this little plane here, if I go up on those stairs, that will get the enemies to spawn in. To uh, you don't necessarily have to go on those stairs. You can see this light gray line on the ground. If you break that barrier as well, if you break that plane, you'll spawn in the additional enemies. There's going to be two grunts and an elite on the right and two grunts and an elite on the left. But basically, before you spawn those guys in, you want Johnson to be out in the middle of the room in general so the enemies are distracted by him. And you could climb up here if you would like and uh, take out these grunts from up here with some headshots from the BR. And remember, there's two grunts on each side and one elite on each side. So we'll have to take out four grunts. And uh, once we do that, I will close the gap and take out these elites. As he becomes distracted by Johnson, which he's doing right here, you could tell he's kind of stuck in that animation because he's shooting two to two and a half bursts of his plasma rifle, and then he points his gun up at the sky as it cools down. That means he's kind of stuck in the animation of firing at Johnson, so you could more easily and confidently kind of move up, wrap around behind him, and assassinate him. So we're going to do that right now. And I can't really see the Elite visually. He's kind of obscured by the geometry over there. But I could hear that he's shooting his gun in two long bursts followed by a second shorter burst. And I know that that will get his gun to overheat because of the Anger Skull. So that is why I'm able to confidently just move up and just back smack him real quick for the kill. And now I'm just going to start shoving Johnson into this doorway. And we're going to try to block him in with one of the boxes. So the closest box to this area I'm going to shove into this little hallway, this side hallway. This one right here, we're going to move this up. And you want to do this as quickly as you can because Johnson can wrap around and kind of start uh, walking back towards this opening that we created. So you can see he's standing right there. I'm a little nervous that he's going to make a run for it. He's he's motioning like he wants to. And we're going to try to box him in before he can run back towards the beginning of the mission. So just kind of keep slicing him as you need to if he, uh, you know, starts looking defiant. And now he's running back again. Where is he? There he is. Okay. So we got him... Nope, nope, he's he's making a run for it. Keep slicing him. Be aware that the Elite is over on the left as well, so you always want that in the back of your mind where the Elite is still kind of in hiding. So we got that in place to block that pathway, and this one looks good as well. So we're all set on the corralling Johnson front for now at least, and we can see that the Elite is now taking interest in Johnson, so that's good news. And you can see the plasma burst is two long bursts or two long bursts followed by a second short burst. And that is how you know that uh, the plasma pistol or the plasma rifle rather is overheating. And he's doing that same thing that I was talking about where he's kind of fixated on Johnson firing and then his gun overheats. So he has to stand there and wait for it to cool down. They don't move when their gun is cooling down. So you could wrap up around behind them and assassinate them. So various different ways that this might play out. Maybe he'll draw his sword and attack Johnson. Uh, there's no telling exactly what you're going to do to take out these elites each and every time, but I skipped ahead here a little bit because Johnson was not cooperating, so I kind of barricaded him in and then continued sorting him to the next section. Once you get to the bottom of the stairs here, you're good, and you want to stop meleeing him for a little bit because this is where you'll get a checkpoint if you're not meleeing or jumping. So just stand still for a little bit, and you'll get a checkpoint there after a couple seconds, and then we could continue sorting Johnson up the stairs into the next section where he will serve as another grand distraction for the elites. And as we sword Johnson, you can see there's a BR on the stairs, so you're going to grab the ammo from that as you walk over it, and you should have a full BR now as you walk into the section, and we're going to slice him through the gap in the railing right there so he could fall down and become more of a distraction than if we kept him up here. So you can see all the nades up here. You can see I zoomed in on, like, four different groups of four or five plasma nades each. So there's like 16 to 20 plasma grenades up here. It's pretty crazy. So we're going to use those plasma grenades to try to stick the elites. And you can see a lot of the times when you stick elites, they actually aggro and get super angry and draw their sword, which is what we want to see. So we're going to take out the grunts as they spawn in with the BR with a headshot. And then we're going to try to stick as many elites as possible so they are no longer a threat because we're up here. They can't kill us with a sword from down there. They can only kill us if they still have their plasma rifles out. So we want to get those plasma rifles out of their hands as quickly as possible. So just try to stick as many elites as you can. No rush or anything, though. There's some crates you could move up towards these railings for uh, some cover. And you can see Johnson is hiding behind those crates, like I mentioned. He loves those boxes. Sometimes he loves them a little too much, though. And he just spends way too much time behind them. So we want to sometimes throw a nade to get him to move. 
and also move the boxes. So even if he does just hang out by the boxes, at least those boxes are closer to the elites we're trying to get distracted by him. So I like to move up here after a certain amount of time, once I can move up here, really, because this is a really good spot to stick uh, elites from. This is a really good spot to hide. You just have to duck, really, behind this barricade, and you're pretty much totally safe. And if you want to be super safe, you can see I'm kind of favoring the left side of this barricade. That's because enemies could kind of go to the end of that catwalk from below and shoot up. And if you're too close to the end of that catwalk, they could still shoot you from uh, that angle. So that's why I was kind of favoring the left side of that barricade once I was up behind it. So uh, once more enemies spawn in through that tube in the wall, you want to make sure you kind of go back and take out those grunts as quickly as possible because the grunts could throw grenades and they do quite often. So you want to make sure you're taking those guys out as quickly as possible because even though you're behind a barricade, they could just lob a grenade right over it and take you out. So you don't want that. Kill the grunts as quickly as possible with the headshots. And then we could refocus on these elites. You can see they're mostly distracted by Johnson and I'm just lobbing grenades. Again, we have like 18 or so uh, plasma grenades up here. So no worries if you miss a few throws and we're just going to take these guys out hopefully aggro them as quickly as possible. Sometimes they aggro more often than others, but you should be able to get all or most of them to draw their swords, even though you won't need that many, because Johnson does tend to shoot at them sometimes. Uh, he can't really see them most of the time, so he doesn't tend to shoot at them a lot of the time, but he will occasionally start shooting at them, and at that point, you could take him out uh, with a headshot from the BR. So you can see that's what's happening right now. That guy had no shield, uh, so we were able to take him out pretty quick. And you can see with these plasma grenades, I'm not just throwing them uh, willy-nilly. You can see I'm just waiting for them to kind of get in an animation of shooting at Johnson, being fixated on him, and just standing still before I throw the nades. So that way I have a lot better chance of sticking them and avoiding having the elites dodge all of my throws. But that was good right there. You could see there were two elites back-to-back -back that Johnson took the shields down on. And the reason for that is they both actually accidentally exposed themselves to Johnson by damaging each other. So fun fact, if a sword elite is meleeing somebody, there's no friendly fire for that. So a sword elite, even if he hits another elite, won't damage that other elite. But if a regular elite with a plasma rifle out, for instance, is meleeing somebody and a friendly to that elite gets in the way, that elite will hurt the other elite. So since there were two plasma rifle wielding elites meleeing Johnson, they were both accidentally hitting each other and damaging each other and thereby exposing themselves and deactivating their camo. And then that way Johnson was able to finish off what was left of their shields because they were both beating the crap out of each other and uh, I was able to just pick them off with the BR real quick. So now we have only Sword Elites remaining, and you can speed this up. Johnson will eventually kind of figure out that he's being sorted to death slowly over a millennia and uh, start firing at the Elite. So you can see he was kind of peppering one of the Elites. There he goes again. But you can speed this process up. Sometimes he really tears into them, and you could finish them off quickly. Sometimes it takes forever. Uh, and then the Elites always have the... Uh, opportunity to kind of run away and get their shields back as well so that's always annoying but you could just jump down there if you would like if you want to risk it to speed this up to grab a plasma rifle or a plasma pistol so then you could start peppering them from up here and taking their shields down and then you could finish them off with your BR so you can see that's what I did there I grabbed two plasma rifles and I'm just gonna run in the complete opposite direction so hopefully they cannot follow me and chase me Jump up on this box and you get back up from uh, this angle. And then I could just kind of shoot these guys from up here safely. And just speed this process up. Again, Johnson will take down their shields by himself eventually anyway. So if you don't want to jump down there and risk it, that's totally fine. But we're just going to speed this part up a little bit here. And hopefully Johnson will join in once I kind of uh, deactivate their camo by shooting them. But it looks like he's not doing anything. I mean, I guess he's, you know, taking all these hits for the team. So I can't really fault him too much here. But we're just going to take these guys out. His shield popped. And uh, we got one that still has a little bit of a shield. So you could actually choose to jump down there and melee this guy, this last remaining guy, so you could get some shield back. You probably have no shield at this point from taking hits while you were killing all those other guys. But I'm just going to shoot him with a headshot. Why not? Who cares? Who needs a shield? So I'm going to move Johnson. As soon as that last elite dies, you want to move Johnson to this position uh, in front of that crate. If that crate's not there, don't worry about it. Just move him to that general position. And then you could actually just stand here, and you'll get a checkpoint at this uh, location here. So I'm just looking out the window, because looking out this window speeds things up a little bit, all the dialogue that happens. And now this door that I'm looking at is going to open up, and Johnson's going to be standing right there, and all those guys are going to be distracted by Johnson. So there's three grunts. Headshot all those guys real quick, and two elites. So those two elites should be fixated on Johnson pretty heavily, so... We'll be able to kind of wrap up around 
and just assassinate these two guys. And we should be able to get our shield back that way. So one quick smack there. Another quick smack. That guy was uh, starting to berserk and starting to pull out his sword. But I was able to melee him before that happened. And now we're going to move forward with Johnson. And we're going to stop meleeing once we get to this turret up here. You can see right in the middle of this hallway there's a turret. Right about here, you get a checkpoint if you stop meleeing and jumping, so that's what I did here. You could also grab BR ammo from this dead marine, and also you can melee that turret that we stopped at to get some more shield if you need it. Sword Johnson into this area, take out the two grunts on the turrets up top there, and once those two guys are dead, we're going to move forward into this room. This room is the toughest in the mission, probably. Lots of elite reinforcements coming in, and we're going to sword these boxes up towards those elites to start here, because Johnson likes to hide behind these crates. And we're just going to push him up and basically force him to move up uh, towards these enemies here. We're actually not going to rely on him too much in this section like we did in the previous room. But we're going to, uh, you know, move these crates up all the same. Why not have him up there rather than back here doing nothing? Uh, this is very rare for an elite to already go crazy and run at Johnson. But we're going to take this as an opportunity to kill one elite and not have to worry about one more elite over there. So we're going to take out the grunts as often and quickly as we can because the grunts can throw plasma grenades and we're going to really try to avoid that in this section because they could destroy the turrets up top and we're going to use those turrets to kill the elites over there. Sounds risky and almost impossible, but there's a really uh, interesting way you could actually go about this. So the only crate I don't move is that one I just jumped on because I use that to jump up here. I always want a way to get up to that catwalk. So I go over here and grab some BR ammo from the dead marine on the ground. You could always take this opportunity to headshot a grunt as well if you have a good angle. So we killed one there. We're going to jump up here and we're going to start moving some boxes around. And we want to make sure before we do this that all the grunts are dead. There's going to be more reinforcements coming in, dropping off more grunts. So as that happens, you want to kill them. Um, but we want to start off with that one box. You can see I kind of shoved it over there. You want to kind of aim a little bit above the box with the sword and uh, when it comes to those smaller boxes and that will get it to kind of pop up and that way I was able to kind of hit it over the railing and now we're going to move this bigger box and you want to kind of keep this box more towards the left of this catwalk that extends out towards the window so you can see I'm just checking for grunts because I don't want grunts throwing grenades up at these turrets when I go and knock that box further I probably should have moved that smaller box uh, before I started moving this bigger box down this area but uh, whatever it worked out so we're going to move this box towards this uh, turret here on the left. We want to kind of have it more towards the left than the right uh, for now. So I'm just going to melee this plasma turret for some health. We don't care about the status of those plasma turrets other than to get health from. Uh, we really want to make sure that the other turrets on the right survive that are actually facing the enemy. So you can see this kind of dark gray line that was leading up to that uh, turret that I just destroyed. That's also leading to the turret on the other side of this catwalk. So we want to make sure that this big crate that we're smacking around is centered on that line because we're going to push this crate up towards that plasma turret uh, so we could hop on the plasma turret without the enemy knowing we're there so we want to make sure that this crate is pushed right up against the center of that turret and you can see i backed up here because there's more grunt reinforcements that came in and like i've been mentioning you want to take those guys out as soon as possible you want to move away from those turrets so if they do throw a nade at you it won't blow up those turrets and uh, we'll be able to take those guys out but as soon as you're done taking out the grunts and your box is pretty much in position uh, we want to start throwing a couple nades down here. And the reason we're doing this is because we want to move the crates down below to a position where the elites cannot hide behind them. So they like to congregate around that position where they get through the glass there from outside. Um, but they do like to move around a little bit. So we want to move these boxes that are near that area uh, away from them so they don't have any way to hide behind anything. So just throw a couple nades. You can see I threw a frag deep into the corner there and that knocked the two boxes all the way into the corner so the elites can't hide behind that and i also threw a couple plasma grenades in here closer to knock the boxes more towards my position and the reason i chose plasma grenades is because those don't bounce nearly as much so it's easier to kind of throw those behind an object but you can see here now i'm putting the finishing touches on this box it is now centered on that dark gray line like i mentioned on the floor so we know it's right up against that turret and you can see i'm using the br to smack this box because the br is gentle enough where it won't destroy the turret while the sword will so we're going to move up along the side of the box there and just hold the action button so once we're in range of the turret we could actually hop onto it and you can see the elites are not reacting to me shooting at them that's because they cannot actually see me so you could just sit here and shoot these guys and they'll just kind of sit here and take it if there were a bunch of crates in the way or just around they will kind of hide behind the crate sometimes 
Sometimes they'll just sit there and take it. A lot of the times they'll uh, hide uh, behind the cover of the crates. So it's just annoying and takes longer if the crates are around. It's still definitely doable even if you don't move the crates at all. It's just more annoying because they run behind it and get their shield back and then run back and you shoot them again. Then they run back and get their shield sometimes. So uh, eventually they will just stand there and take it and you could kill them. But I skipped ahead here because it's just, uh, you know, taking a while where I'm just shooting at them with infinite ammo. So there's no real challenge there other than just sitting there and waiting patiently for them to kind of accept their fate. But we're going to move Johnson down here uh, towards the bottom of the right stairway. There's two stairways. Uh, once you're facing the wall there, when you're not facing the window, and uh, you will want to move them down the right side. It doesn't really matter too much, but we're going to jump up here and destroy any of the remaining turrets. There's also that uh, turret on the same side as the one we were using. You could use that one if the first one we were on actually ends up getting blown up. You have the option to move uh, your box up even further down the catwalk, and you'll be able to uh, hop on that one, hopefully. So it's not the worst case scenario if that first turret that we were on blows up. You could uh, hope to get on that second one as well. But we didn't have to this time. Johnson is distracting all the enemies down there. Usually he distracts two grunts out of the three, but he got all three distracted over there. And then he'll always draw the attention of the two elites down here. So worst case scenario, you kill the two grunts with a headshot. Then you go down the other side that Johnson's not at. You might have to headshot a grunt who's uh, focused on you, but that's easy enough. And then you could just wrap up around the two elites that are distracted by Johnson and assassinate those guys. And we're going to move Johnson forward here along the right side. And I was just seeing what uh, grenades I had out. I happen to have plasma grenades out. And we're going to stick this first elite as he opens up the door here. And then we're going to go to the other side and start smacking this guy. That will get him to turn around due to the Sputnik skull. More BR ammo by this dead marine back here. So I went and grabbed that. We have full BR ammo at this point. And we have some pretty good shields going. We'll slice Johnson up the ramp here on the right side. And there's going to be two elites shooting at uh, Master Guns up top here, who we met during the armory. And uh, we're going to move Johnson up here, who will distract the elites. A lot of the times, the elites will move up to where I was looking there, and you could actually back smack them. Uh, you just hit them in the back of the foot, basically, the back of their heel, and they will actually go down. But this time around, I'm going to uh, start sticking them because they're not actually moving forward like I would like them to do. So that's okay. We'll stick that guy. Now he's moving forward. This is where he generally moves to, so I'm trying to do that back of the heel smack. He's not exactly in the right position, but he's generally there when he's moving forward. But uh, we didn't get him this time, but that's okay. We'll just uh, we'll just kill him in other ways. Looks like Johnson's doing a good job of taking down his shield, so we'll just finish him off with a headshot. This guy. We'll stick him, see what happens. Nothing. I could probably wrap up around behind this guy and assassinate him for some shields, but I'm just going to let Johnson... Take down his remaining shield and finish him with a headshot. BR ammo on the table there. There's a couple uh, things you could destroy for shield here. One is this uh, weird, I don't know what this thing is, but you could destroy it. I like to pin it against the table there and uh, hit that. Sometimes it gives you shield, sometimes it doesn't. Here's another one of those small boxes where you can get on top of and melee it. Again, you don't want to melee it with a sword. That will not count for the black eye skull. You want to melee it with any other weapon. So the BR is what we're using here. Again, no way to tell if it worked or not. So kind of annoying. And then we'll move Johnson up here towards this barricade where he's going to take refuge for a little bit. Then we're going to back up and stop uh, swiping your sword because you're going to get a checkpoint here if you stop swiping and jumping for a little bit. So uh, we backed up once we got Johnson in there, stopped, got the two headshots on the grunts there. Then there was the uh, grunt on the turret that we headshot. And then there's going to be three grunts pretty much in the same position along the wall where we're coming out of. So the turret and then two grunts on the ground as well. So we took those guys out. There's also going to be an elite on each side. And also in the back, you can see there's a turret set up where two grunts are. So we took out the grunt on the turret. That will get the second grunt who's on foot just hanging around to hop on the turret himself. And then we could take him out. So then we only have the two elites remaining to deal with. Sometimes the elite that's firing at Johnson, uh, kind of on the other end of the hallway here, or not hallway, but the other end of the room here, you can see he's kind of shooting at me almost as well. Uh, that guy sometimes encroaches on Johnson's position, but you can see I was waiting for him to have to cool down his weapon before I just kind of moved up uh, towards his little platform over here. And then I was able to close the gap, and I could hear him shooting at Johnson now, so I'm going to take that opportunity to melee him in the back because, again, we know when he's unable to fire because of the anger skull. So that's what I was talking about earlier when I said it's kind of beneficial that they fire like crazy in this because their weapons overheat a lot of the time. So I'm doing the same thing. I was looking at that streak of plasma bolts to know when he couldn't shoot anymore. 
So same thing here. We're just going to close the gap on this elite as we uh, know when he can and cannot shoot because we could hear his long stream of plasma bolts and then the cooldown period. And then after that, we're going to go grab Johnson and we're just going to slice him up. When he's in that position, he cannot be moved. Uh, so we're going to wait for him to get out of that. Now he's out of it, so we could move him up to this barricade. And then we're going to shove him in this hallway. And uh, since we moved up to that second elite, uh, we broke a barrier that actually spawns in some more enemies on the left, the far left corner of this map. So we're going to send Johnson towards those guys right now. So we're just going to slice them. Keep slicing them. Slice them towards this barricade. We got a nade coming in. We got a new hat for Johnson. Okay, so this next part is really important. You want to kill only three enemies, no more, no less. Three shall be the number thou shalt kill, and the number of the killing shall be three. So we can see that Johnson is up at that barricade where we want him to be, and there's going to be three grunts and two elites. So we want to ideally kill two elites and one grunt. That will be our three, uh, but a lot of the times you'll only be able to kill one elite and two grunts. So I'll show you how to deal with those situations. But the one situation you want to avoid at all costs is headshotting all the grunts. It's super tempting, I know, but just wait until at least one of the elites comes towards Johnson draws a sword. It always happens, uh, given enough time, and you'll be able to backsmack that one elite. Usually, the second elite doesn't do that, uh, but in this run-through, he actually does. So I'll show you how to deal with uh, the situation uh, we're presented with here, where we get two elites and uh, one grunt, and uh, I'll show you how to deal with it if we only happen to kill one of the elites. So we took out one grunt, and we're going to finish off this elite as well, so that will be three total kills out of this group of enemies. So now at this point, we want to make sure that Johnson moves up to that barricade again. We need him to be there. And we can see that those remaining enemies have retreated uh, into the hallway there. So at this point, we want to take out this turret. And then we want to move into this uh, doorway here. We want to, right about here, the doorway will open. That will spawn in the next section. And we immediately want to cut back. We'll get a checkpoint there, actually. And we're going to make sure Johnson is still here. He is. We're going to go into this doorway and backsmack this elite because he spawns in right as we break that barrier. And then we're going to go back out towards Johnson. But you can see on top of that elite, I actually backsmacked immediately. I spawned in more enemies uh, where I got that checkpoint. You can see there's two elites and three grunts over there. But I'm going to turn my attention to the three remaining enemies over here. And if there was one elite and two grunts, uh, one grunt would be on the turret, one would be on foot. So I would just headshot the grunts as uh, slowly and methodically as I could because the elite could always pop out. And then I would be able to wait for the elite to get on the turret. And then he's much less of a threat and I could come up behind him later. So that's how you would deal with the elite uh, if he was over there, just kind of take out the grunts and wait for the elite to get on the turret. And then we'll come up behind him later. But uh, now at this point, I'm going to turn my attention to these guys. And we'll headshot the three grunts easily enough. You could always wait for the third grunt who's carrying a plasma turret to come set it up. And then you could use that for shields later, which you can see I'm doing right here. So now he's set that up, so he's useless to me now. I'm going to headshot him. And then the two remaining elites, they don't charge your position or anything, but they do hang out over there. And if you do get closer to them, they will start attacking you. The reason I went over there and got that checkpoint is not only to get that checkpoint, but spawn in the next section, which has a bunch of friendly forces over there. So that's why they're not pushing forward and attacking me, because they're distracted by all those friendlies over there. So they're kind of just looking in the opposite direction until I get closer. But you can see I wrapped up around this final grunt. Just imagine that this is the elite. This is what you would do to take this guy out. Uh, just kind of get him to be alone so he gets on the turret, and then you can wrap up around behind the turret. He'll hop off, and grunts are actually harder to melee. Uh, from behind with the Sputnik Skull, they tend to turn around faster, so it's harder to backsmack them with the Sputnik exploit. Uh, but the elites are easier to take out, believe it or not, from behind. So we're going to go up here, and you could actually grab dual plasma pistols from those dead grunts. And a lot of the times, uh, those two elites are in this doorway, and the doorway is still open. So you could plasma pistol them with two plasma pistols from far away to take their shield down, because on Lasso... It actually takes two overcharged plasma pistol bursts to take down their shield, so you could kind of shoot two overcharged plasma pistol bursts at him at once that will collapse their enhanced shield on lasso difficulty, and then switch to your BR real quick to finish him off with a headshot. I totally missed. I hit the door frame with that, but uh, since there's only one left, I'm going to engage in the Sputnik exploit, which means I'm going to smack him. It'll turn him around, and then I'll just smack him in the back real quick to finish him off. So now that we are done with those guys, I'm going to grab my sword back. I have my BR. I'm going to uh, grab the Johnson that we all know and love from the barricade. We're just going to slice him through. I'm going to speed this part up uh, because it's just me slicing him up to where we need to go. And I am going to stop it at about here because I want to show you that I'm going to grab BR ammo. More BR ammo on the wall here. I'm going to smack this turret to get shield up. I'm pretty sure it's all the way full anyway. But just to show you those resources if you need them. Then we're going to keep slicing them through. 
And this is the section where there are going to be two Johnsons because you're not supposed to have this original Johnson with you. So you're supposed to meet up with Johnson later in this mission at this point. But uh, now since we dragged him through and he never despawned, we have two Johnsons here. So we have Miranda Keys as well. So we have three invincible allies with us here in this section. There's going to be three grunts down the hallway. So just take those guys out easily enough with your BR. And there's also going to be an elite hanging out in the hallway as well. So uh, we could close the gap on that guy by using our sword to kind of slice Johnson up ahead. There's uh, there's the second Johnson here. We want to make sure we keep tabs on the original Johnson, though, which is easy enough because he has the plasma rifle we gave him in the beginning. So we're going to make sure we keep him because you can't actually bring the second Johnson with you. He will despawn. I tried to drag all three of them with me uh, at one point, but they all despawn except for the original Johnson. So you can see here I'm kind of just pushing boxes ahead of me so I could use them as cover. I could really just close the gap easily by kind of swiping these boxes ahead of me, and then I get super close to the Elite, and I could either smack them a couple times with the Sputnik Skull exploit, or I could just kind of move up my allies and uh, close the gap on them and just let uh, the allies take them out. They actually do a pretty good job if they're focused on the elite of taking them out pretty quickly, even on lasso. So I'm going to just kind of hang out. And I was trying to show off the ability of your friendly AI in this section to quickly take out this elite, but they're not having it. Uh, they had an opportunity to impress and they did not. So I'm just going to uh, pepper this guy from afar. Then we could always switch to the BR and take him out with a headshot. Or or not. I was trying to show off the skills of my friendly AI here in this section, and they just were not having it. I've gone through this section multiple times before where they just mowed down the opposition. But this time, they're just not doing it, of course, now that the cameras are rolling. So I'll backsmack that guy, I guess, to take him out. And then there's going to be three more grunts and an elite that spawn down here at the end of this section. So this section is generally a lot easier than the previous section we were just in. But you want to be careful still because you have three... Uh, friendly AIs who are not going to die, so you might as well just wait for them to take these guys out because normally you would have a checkpoint right before entering this room, but if you'll recall, we actually used that checkpoint prematurely uh, so we could manipulate the AI in the previous section, and that way we were able to more efficiently and easily take out those enemies, but we don't have that checkpoint yet. We still haven't got that checkpoint, so if I die right now, I'm going to wind up halfway through that previous room, which would be annoying, so... We'll just slowly and surely take out these guys. Remember to just kind of keep your distance. Take out the three grunts with the headshot bursts from your battle rifle. And then for the elites, you could really just leave it up to these three invincible allies of yours. So I'm just going to kind of hang back. I could help them out with a plasma rifle or a plasma pistol. You can see I'm doing that right now. Hopefully three or one of my three uh, enemies or allies, I can't talk right now. Hopefully one of them will pick up on the fact that they're getting sliced to death and will start helping me out here. But really, even if they don't shoot at all, kind of like they were doing that right there, not helping out, uh, you could just kind of rely on the fact that they're going to at least distract the Elite, and you'll be able to pepper the Elite from afar until his shields collapse, and then you could uh, take him out with the BR headshot. But after all that, we're going to make sure we have the correct Johnson, make sure he's the one with the plasma rifle to indicate he's the original Johnson that won't despawn as we move through here. We're going to cut into the right, and you want to stop swiping because you get a checkpoint right there as the subtitle authorized personnel only pops up. You can see I stopped swiping momentarily, so I ensure I get that checkpoint. We're going to move this box up towards the door so we could use it for cover, and then we could easily stick one of the elites here at the doorway. And you can see I accidentally threw a frag initially. You want to make sure you have your plasma grenades out. Fortunately, I was able to follow up quickly with a plasma grenade to stick that guy. And sometimes you could stick and kill the second elite as well, but this time he ran away. And uh, we're going to backtrack here a little bit. There's BR ammo on the ground. There's a full plasma pistol with 100 charge. There's also a bunch of plasma grenades on the ground by that dead grunt. So we're going to juggle our plasma pistol and battle rifle up here. We're going to slap this crate to the side because we don't need it anymore. And then, of course, don't forget Johnson. We're going to double back and start swiping him out of the airlock here. And he'll drop down, and we could keep dragging him through the mission. And we're going to juggle our weapons out of the airlock here. So we want to bring our battle rifle, the plasma pistol, and also the sword. So, But ideally you want to drop the sword out because we're going to use the plasma pistol and the BR right now. So once you grab the BR and plasma pistol and drop the sword out of the hatch there, we're going to go up here and we're going to take out these remaining four ranger elites since we only killed one. There's five total in this section with the two initial ones being up in your face. But we're going to jump to the top of this area where we kind of came to this uh, outer space section from. And you can see that these elites are just standing around and just waiting for you to kind of encroach on their position. So you can really just line up your battle rifle 
with uh, their head or chest, and then you could switch to your plasma pistol, overcharge the plasma pistol. These shields of ranger elites are weak enough where it only takes one overcharged plasma pistol burst to take down their shield entirely. Even though you're on lasso, most elites need two overcharged plasma pistol bursts on lasso. These guys only need one, so... Just wait for him to kind of fly to the top of that structure, and then you could line up your shot and easily take him out with the noob combo. And then you could switch for your sword. We don't need the plasma pistol anymore. And we're going to give Johnson our battle rifle real quick. Scared the crap out of me because when I switch weapons, it showed him as not holding anything temporarily. Uh, but the animation completed where he's holding the battle rifle. Thank God. That's never happened to me before. And those elites aren't always on top of that structure, so it's not always that easy. It usually is that easy. But if they're not on top there, just shoot your BR a little bit. Maybe throw a couple of grenades over there to get them to move around a little bit. They'll fly up on top, and then once they stop moving, then you can take your shot. But we're just slapping Johnson along here, and this is another section where you want to stop meleeing for a little bit because you're going to get a checkpoint once you cross over this dead marine on the ground here. So I'm going to exchange the plasma rifle that I grabbed from Johnson for this battle rifle on the ground here. And I'm going to throw the plasma rifle towards the door over there. Not 100% necessary, but you can see I paused right there to ensure I get a checkpoint. And we're going to move Johnson through now that we waited a couple seconds. And we're going to go to the opposite side here real quick. And you can see there's a BR on the wall. So we have full BR ammo now. And we gave Johnson a BR as well so he could chip in and take out these buggers. But you can see I was zooming in on that crate. We're going to use that crate hopefully as Johnson's refuge here. We're going to move him right up to that crate and then throw a plasma grenade far enough away from the crate on the left where it takes out some of the buggers, hopefully, or damages them, but it's far enough away from that crate where it doesn't send it flying, and hopefully Johnson will kind of hang out and post up by that crate. Sometimes he does, sometimes he doesn't, and when he does, it's really beneficial because the buggers really fixate on him, uh, but sometimes he moves to the left like he did just then, which is still beneficial. He's still distracting the buggers somewhat, but not as much as he would if he was up on that uh, middle crate right there. So we're just going to hang back, no rush here, just kind of... Wait for the buggers to land on the wall or the ceiling, wherever they're going to land. And then at that point, you can start BRing these guys. But just hang back here, post up in this doorway. You can always duck back in the doorway if you need to. Uh, they're not really going to take too many shots at you over here. They're mostly distracted by Johnson, and there's another Marine hanging out in between Johnson and you. So two lines of defense in between you, and if they do wind up shooting at you, there's always the doorway to duck behind. So we're just going to peek out a little more now because we've killed all the enemies on the left, or most of them. And uh, we could kind of start cleaning these last remaining buggers up. Looks like we got three at least. More than I thought. But we're going to grab the remaining BR ammo on the wall shortly because we got to be running somewhat low at this point. And uh, one other thing I should mention, I should have mentioned it earlier probably, is the fact that I have competitive scoring on. And the reason I have that on is because it's beneficial to see the score pop up when you kill an enemy. Because sometimes you might throw a nade around a corner and you can't see what happens with that nade. Um, but if you actually have scoring on, you know that you got a kill by the fact that you got, uh, you know, a score pop-up. That score happens to be zero right now because we're well over part-time, and once you go double part-time, you start getting no points for your kills, but that's okay. This is Lasso, and we're just cruising through, lackadaisically. But anyway, once you take out those buggers, you want to jump on top of that elevator and then activate it so it starts descending again. It'll be rising up towards you, uh, but you want to just activate it so it starts going down again. And I'm getting shot by a bugger. Looks like there's one remaining bugger on top of the ceiling somewhere. And uh, I don't usually see them here. It's kind of he's kind of stuck in a weird spot there. So I guess we'll uh, we'll just deal with him now that he's revealed himself. So just start in on him. Looks like Johnson was helping me out there a little bit actually. So that was nice. And now we will give Johnson back his plasma rifle. Not 100% necessary to give him a BR in this section, but you could see that he was chipping in a little bit there. So he's much more effective with the battle rifle against those buggers since they don't have any shielding. Uh, so we will give him back his plasma rifle for the remainder of the mission. We're going to kill this guy for shield. Because I don't have a shield at this point. You can see kind of the sparks and uh, electricity going around my lack of heads-up display, I guess. My view. And uh, that is a way to tell that you have no shield at all. So now we have one full shield. And we'll be able to move to the next section. With that in tow, we'll also be able to drag Johnson there because he has no say in what happens to him at any point in time, apparently. Looks like he's trying, though. He's fighting. But we're going to slice him over the edge and down the incline here, and he likes to slide down once you do get him over the edge, which is nice. Uh, you don't have to put much effort into getting him onto the elevator once he's over the edge. And I'm just going to slice these boxes forward a little bit because we know how much he likes to hide behind boxes. So I'm just trying to make those a little closer to the enemies here. And there should be some grunts. I took out some already before uh, we got down here with Johnson when I was activating the control on top of it. And there are going to be two elites. So take out the grunts with headshots easily enough. And then there's two elites 
we could stick them to get them aggroed, which we did with this one guy here. And it looks like Johnson is looking to take down his shield, which would be nice. I'd be for that. And we're going to stick the other one. That guy aggroed as well. So now we just got two sword guys hanging around. And uh, we'll see what happens here. So remember, we don't want to actually engage the two sword elites at the same time because even if they're in sync with their sword swipes, uh, the chances of you getting in there and assassinating one of them without getting hit by the other guy is not great. So we're going to get creative here. We're going to grab some plasma, easily take out one of them while he's distracted by Johnson, and then the other guy we could... Oh my god, I guess not back smack him. Sometimes you smack him in the back and it doesn't register. So uh, we'll go in and try that again. Fortunately, he did not get me on that backswing. I don't know how. But uh, we'll smack that guy, take him down. But if you're out of nades by this point, or you happen to just throw nades at them and they don't go aggro, you could always encroach on their position with the boxes, kind of push the boxes ahead, and then you could kind of close the gap and uh, kind of smack them to get their backs to turn and then uh, smack them again to finish them off or distract them with Johnson like we've been doing as well and wrap up around behind them as their guns cool down. Multiple options for taking out these elites. But now we're going to drag Johnson to the next section. And before we do that, before we step into here, we want to smack that crate to kind of push it up towards that door because we want to smack that crate out of this section once it opens up because Johnson loves crates. So we're going to push this crate forward and uh, then we're going to push Johnson forward and hopefully he will go kind of hang out by the crate. Sometimes he does, sometimes he doesn't. But uh, we push the crate out there, which is kind of in a perfect position, if I do say so myself. And Johnson graciously decided to walk up towards it this run through sometimes he does sometimes he doesn't either way he's going to serve as a distraction it's just a matter of where he is as a distraction and once he's out there distracting people you can just wait for those two ranger elites to come up and uh kind of stand still eventually just kind of wait for them to stop moving and start firing at johnson they'll just stand there and take your plasma pistol overcharge bursts there's plenty of plasma pistols on the ground in this section and this little hatch i'm in so no worries there if you didn't bring one with you. There's a bunch on the ground, and uh, you can see we want to take those two out first. You want to wait and take the turret guy out last because once there's one remaining, the remaining last guy retreats. So if that happens to be a jetpacking uh, ranger elite who's not on the turret, he'll just fly away and be much harder to kill. But if the last remaining guy is on a turret, he'll just sit there on the turret, and then we could easily just line up our shot from far away, aim for the head with the BR, then line it up with the plasma pistol, overcharge then be our burst to the head to finish him off but we're almost done dragging johnson all the way through this mission we're going to move him up to this area and you can see this kind of uh geometry moves back and forth because it's actually the functioning mac cannon which is pretty cool that we're on but we're just going to wait for that to go down then we can move him up here and we're just going to slice him along this thing and we want to slice him up this incline until about here we'll slice him forward a little bit more there we go, right about there, and then we want to wait for it to go down. So once it starts going down, I can start slicing again. You want to do this because two more Ranger Elites spawn in from the left, and then you want to back up as soon as you get him towards the end of that, and the first thing that they see will be Johnson, and they'll stop moving, and they will just focus on him. So you can stick both of them quickly and easily. You don't want to try to back smack both of them. Maybe you want to stick the first one and then back smack the last one but you definitely don't want to backsmack both of them because it's kind of tough. They're kind of up in the air. It's just difficult to do uh, quickly without one of them turning on you. So two quick sticks, easy enough. Johnson fell down uh, towards the bottom of this map, which is not good. Sometimes he despawns if he falls down here, uh, but fortunately I was able to retrieve him. And if you are able to retrieve him, that is a path you could take to uh, get him back up to the top level. So follow that path if you need to, and then uh, we'll get to the elevator here. Here is a section where you want to just kind of hang out as those doors open. You want to not slice for a couple seconds because there's another checkpoint you're going to get there if you're not meleeing. So make sure that you pause for a second or two as those elevator doors open up. And then once you're done pausing to get that checkpoint, you want to shove Johnson through, of course. And we're going to shove all these boxes up towards the remaining elites as well because Johnson loves to hide behind those boxes. But I have no shield at this point, so I'm going to go back here. There is a Marine that likes to hang out over here. You could slice him twice real quick with your sword, and that will get him super weak. And then you could finish him off with one melee from the BR, and that will get your shield at least full, even though you don't have a nice double over shield, which would be preferable. But we at least got the one shield going here, and we're just going to shove Johnson up. All these boxes to play with, and he's just hiding behind the one all the way in the back. Why doesn't he hide behind the one up front? You know what I mean? Come on. So we'll just shove these up for him. 
you want to be aware of your surroundings because the elites, although they tend to stay all the way over there at the other end of the room, sometimes one will flank you and kind of wrap up around behind. So just kind of be aware of that possibility. And uh, we'll try to get Johnson up as soon as possible into the fight here. And you can see there's kind of uh, catwalks on either side. A little bit higher. They're at like head height to my right here. I'm under one right now. And uh, they have a box up on top as well. So sometimes Johnson likes to get on top of those and go behind the crate up there. So that's no good either. So we're just going to try to shove all the boxes over there. And uh, he does a better job sometimes than others uh, with the distraction game. But we're really just going to play uh, the waiting game here. Try to stick the elites like we were in previous rooms to get them to aggro. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to get that to happen. And one will come attack Johnson and we'll be able to take him on one-on-one -on -one instead of one-on-six or whatever it is over there. So we got this guy to come over here. Meleeed him. We got a shield now. So that's good news. One's, uh, one's sorting over there. So that's good too. And you just want to be aware of the sword guys because those guys, more so than others, will be... Uh, likely to flank you and come up around uh, the side of you or something, so that would not be great. This guy, though, has no shield, so we're going to take him out. This part is kind of random. There's no real planning uh, for their spawns and exactly where they're going to be and what they're going to do, so it really is just kind of uh, being comfortable. Hopefully, having mastered all the skills you have to get this far, uh, kind of engaging the elites, and uh, especially with the Sputnik exploit where you could smack them and they just turn around. So if you can get them close enough, they're not that hard. It's when they could shoot you from far away where they're a lot tougher. So we're just going to peek around here. Stick them as we can as they get distracted by Johnson like we were originally. Throw a couple plasmas. Each time you uh, melee and kill an elite, you should be grabbing some plasma grenades as well. Due to the catch skull, they drop more nades than they do normally. So you shouldn't be too scarce on the plasma grenade front through the entire mission. Another tip for dealing with elites if they actually charge your location, you could actually go back to the elevator from which you entered this area from and they cannot follow you in there so you'll be safe in there and that's especially valuable for sword elites. Uh, if they are following you and chasing you, you could run back in there, they'll run up to the elevator but they won't enter it and then they'll turn around and you could actually back smack them real quick so that's an easy way to deal with them if uh, you're dealing with one sword elite who happens to just be following you around. Some runs are smoother than others where no sword elites will chase you, while other times a sword elite is just following you for like a full minute. So you just want to run around and uh, try to lose them, but if you can't lose them, just run back to that elevator. Uh, he will approach it, then he'll turn around, you can back smack him real quick to make quick work out of him. So we headshot that guy, and now I'm going to wrap up around behind this guy and assassinate him to A, kill him, but also get some shields. So it's a win-win right there. And I think we only have one remaining elite here. I'm going to try to stick him. I only have frags, apparently. Or maybe I just need to switch to my plasmas. There we go. That's a plasma. Stuck him. He's going crazy. And now since there's nobody left, I could just grab a plasma pistol or a needler or something on the ground. Or not a plasma pistol, but a plasma rifle. Uh, there are no plasma pistols in this section. But I could now switch to uh, that weapon, that plasma weapon, now that he's only got a sword out and he's distracted by Johnson. And I was looking for a dual-wielding weapon, so now I have two plasma rifles. There we go. Ideally, I like to use a needler just because I don't often use the needler. I like to blow him up. But uh, this will suffice. Just take his shield down while he's distracted by Johnson, finish him with the headshot, go hump the bomb, and that is it for Cairo Station. One of the hardest missions in Halo 2 Lasso right off the bat. One of the hardest missions in general in all of Halo. In the books. Join me next time when we tackle Outskirts. It's going to be a lot easier, a lot faster. It was one of the easier missions back in the day when I made these guides five years ago. And now it's even easier. So check that one out. And check all the other ones out too when they come out. I'll see you then. Thanks for watching, guys. If you found that video helpful, be sure to click on the Scorpion icon to subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. You can also check out some related guides by clicking on the videos on screen, and you can find links in the description for other social media links of mine. Stay tuned for more Halo guides, and I'll see you in the next one.